Hello, my name is Nicholas Santillo. I'm the lead of online learning at Logical Outcomes, a Canadian nonprofit. And in this office mix, we're going to run through Unit 2 of our DHIS2 curriculum, which is Users and User Roles. Later on, I'm going to be joined by Sarah Godden as she walks me through how to uh, customize your own user profile when you've signed into DHIS2. This is the DHIS2 curriculum we've been developing at Logical Outcomes, and it's based on the Academy workshops you can see listed on the left-hand side of the screen. In this video, we're going to be looking at users and user roles. The required readings for this unit are Chapter 7 from the DHIS2 user manual, as well as Chapter 15 from the DHIS2 implementation guide. So authentication and authorization. Authentication is the who are you. It's the user name and the password. This is to make sure that uh, you're allowed to get in and see the system itself. And you'll be doing this every time you log in to DHIS2. The authorization is the what are you allowed to do. And this has to do with the user roles. Now users and user roles are very similar, but they are different uh, in DHIS2. And we'll go through that on the next slides. The user roles have to do with what users are allowed to do. So whereas you might have a few dozen or a few hundred of users, you might only have a handful of user roles and then divide those amongst all the different users. So user roles might be admin, super user, data entry, these types of things. And they're a collection or grouping of permissions uh, which the users will be able to uh, do or what they aren't able to do. If you want to spend some time looking through all of those permissions, uh, I suggest you go into the training land uh, instance of DHIS2 or into your own instance if you have one and uh, just take a look through uh, that long and exhaustive list. It's, it's uh, definitely a few dozen if not uh, uh, over a hundred uh, specific, very, very specific options. Finally, user roles are uh, allowed to access specific data sheets or data sets, um, which are where you enter data. So it's important to set up user roles. You might have um, user roles uh, that have similar permissions, but have different data sets that they're allowed to deal with. Now, users have access to user roles. You can give a user one user role or multiple user roles, and then they will have the combination of all of the uh, permissions of those multiple user roles. And the user is connected to organization units, uh, which are the uh, organization levels of uh, your system. Now, we'll talk more about that in a later unit, but uh, to get a general sense of it now, uh, the national, regional, district, subcountry, or subcounty, and health units are examples of organization unit levels in health sectors. And a user might be given access to any one of them or multiple. Uh, now, there might be multiple districts, multiple counties, multiple health units or facilities, and uh, they might have a, a user might only be allowed to have access to a specific region or specific district, um, whereas they might have more or less uh, roles within that. It is important to notice that uh, constraint only applies up the hierarchy. So if you give someone admin access at a district level, that means they also uh, by de facto have admin access to all of the counties and health units within that specific district. Uh, so that's important to remember. This is an example of what you would enter when updating a user or creating a new user. And in the next slide, I'll be signing in to DHIS2 in a little video webcast that I did with Sarah Godden, also of Logical Outcomes. And she's going to go through what you would do as a user to update your profile, your settings, and um, how to manage your uh, user information within DHIS2. So I'll come back after you watch that video. So we're recording. So um, yeah, lead me through. Uh, we're going to be adjusting our personal settings. Yes. So I'll just sign in using the admin for training land for the moment. And then you can uh, lead me through where I need Great. to go. Great. Yeah. So click the profile in the top right corner. Now, there's a few things here that will be interesting for you. Um, one we can look at later is about DHIS2, just where you get your DHIS2 version. Um, that, that will be in there. For you, let's check out your account. Okay. So, it's just going to load now. 
<laughs> okay. So, yeah, an account, you'll change your password if you need to, or an admin person could reset your password. And another important thing is to include your email and your phone number. So this, if you enable the SMS, so messages to text, or, you know, email notifications, this is where it's really important that you have your correct information. Great. Yeah. So let's go back to profile and check out um, settings. Okay. So there's a couple really important pieces here in settings. One is your language. So it's the language that you see, the interface. Um, and then we can also assign translations to date elements and then actually translate the database in a different language. Okay. Cool. Um, you can change your interface color here. And the option below is once we get into reporting, you can choose whether you'd like to see the name or just the short name in a report legend. So it would be advised that you change your settings to see the short name so that when you're viewing reports, you have a nice uh, shorter shorter character name. Okay. So yeah, the other two um, checkboxes here are for if you want email notifications, and then again you need your email address, and then if you want the SMS notification, and again you need the email address. Mm -hmm. So let's click back on profile and actually just go to the profile. So this is where other DHIS2 users who are in your user group and can see you will see information about you. So this is optional, but you could put in, you know, job, job title, gender, a little more information about yourself. Okay, cool. And this is all public within the system. Mm-hmm. Very neat. Cool. And so that's all stuff that I can do once I've logged in, and it's all under this profile area here. Mm-hmm. Great. I think uh, that's about enough for now, yeah? Yes. So finally, here in the last slide, we're going to just cover some best practices. Now, there's obviously a lot of different things that we could go over. These are just four of the ones that... Uh, the DHIS2 Academy likes to cover, and uh, we definitely agree that um, defining username convention is very important. This has to do more with what you want to do in your own um, organization, but it's definitely something to think about whether you're using uh, first name, last name, or just first initial, or however you want to go about that. Also, the appropriate role is very important for your users, uh, making sure that you uh, make uh, enough roles as is appropriate, not not overdoing it. It can very easily make more roles than you need. Uh, so we suggest really minimizing the, the number of roles that you make uh, and then maybe doubling them up if you need to for specific users or special users. But uh, being aware that users should be uh, only allowed to do the things that they need to do and not to give out uh, excess uh, permissions because the system can get uh, very uh, messed up very easily if, if people are deleting things that they're not supposed to be. Um, finally, the data entry level and the analysis level. This is how you're going to be uh, entering data at what level and what, you're, what data you're going to be looking at. Uh, that has to do with the data sets that you have access to in the user roles and, of course, the org units you'll have access to as a user. And this is important because if you have an, uh, only access to certain organizational units or org units, uh, you may not be able to analyze all the data or you may be seeing only part of the full picture. So something to keep in mind when creating uh, these users and user roles. Now, as I said, this is going to be the final slide. So I'm going to leave you with uh, just a little uh, quiz as we like to do at the end of these office mixes to see if um, we can stump you or if you've picked up uh, something along the way. And as always, thanks so much for watching. And we'll pick up with the uh, next unit, unit three, um, after this. So that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, until next time, I'm Nicholas Santillo from Logical Outcomes.